finding the best spot for your factory introduction. Imagine that you are working for a plywood producer that has two factories in Poland and he's considering a third plant that can be put either in Poland or in Ukraine or in Romania. And you have to decide which spot would be the best. Now, before we go into the Excel, a few things just to give you an idea what you should consider while doing the choice for the site to build a new factory. So first of all, when it comes to the plywood, you'd have to look for sufficient amount of raw materials or supplies in the catchment area. In our case, it would be about having sufficient amount of wood, proper wood. Then you have to obviously have a sufficient number of customers in the catchment area. So sometimes you might be so far away from your customers that the number of your customers is not sufficient to support specific idea. So it might be cheap, but then again, you will not have customers, so no money can be made out of this. Then you have to take into account cost of transportation of raw materials to the factory. So how much it costs to, to get the raw materials to the factory where you are going to use them. And the same goes for the finished goods to the customers. So in some location you will see we will be much cheaper in terms of getting the materials or even the materials itself. But the cost of uh, shipping the finished goods will be tremendous. Then it's worth looking at the local labor market. So first of all, what are the costs? But then again, also, are there sufficient numbers of uh, workers to support such investments? So you might have a cheap workers, but then again, there are not sufficient amount of them. And this will basically mean that your investment, it's not viable. We also should look at the cost of electricity because there will be differences, especially when we are talking about different countries. And do you get any support from local government? So quite often, if you put an investment in a specific country, they may reimburse some of the investment you make. So in a sense, you might have an investment in a country that by itself is not a viable one because the finished goods costs of transportation are very high. But then if you add the support you're getting from local government, all of a sudden this might be a very interesting uh, location. So this also should be taken into account. Now let's move on to Excel where we will first go through a cost comparison of the site and then look at uh, some sort of a NPV analysis of those investments. Now we will have a look at the uh, difference in costs for three different sites for the plywood factory. Please open file plywood factory finding the best place for it attached to the lecture and you will see here in a master sheet table of content. We'll start with going through the costs. So let's go to factory cost comparison. As you will see here, we have the following cost position. So transporting of finished goods cost, then wood needed, transporting the raw materials, so in this case, mainly wood, labor, so people, electricity, external services, and this adds up to total costs. As you can see from this, we get actually that Ukraine is the cheapest one, so in column K. And let's see how each and every position is being calculated. So when we look at the cost of transporting finished goods, we have two drivers. So one is basically how many plywood we need in cubic meters. So it's uh, 200. Then for every country, we have a cost per one cubic meter, which will be different due to the following drivers. So we have the cost per one kilometer, which is the same for every country. Then the average distance to the customer is different and number of plywood in one truck is the same. So we basically use the same type of trucks. As you can see, Romania is the furthest away from the customer. Most of the customers are in Germany. That's why here the cost is almost as double as the one in Poland. Poland is the closest one Ukraine is somewhere in the middle. When we look at the wood needed, it is calculated as a number of wood we need and cost per one meter, cubic meter. Here we obviously have difference depending on the country. So the cheapest is Ukraine. Again, wood needed is calculated on the basis of the plywood produced. So from previous assumptions, we have that uh, we'll produce 200,000 cubic meters of plywood. And we know in row 14 that for every cubic meter of plywood, we need three cubic meters of wood. Therefore, we need 600,000 cubic meters of wood, and which is here in, in 12. And um, this generates us the cost of wood needed. Again, the cheapest is Ukraine, followed by Romania. The third item being the transporting of the raw materials is calculated exactly as it is, was in the case of transporting of, of finished goods. The only difference is that uh, instead of uh, plywood here, we've got uh, wood needed. So we have a uh, 600,000 we have to move from the woods to the, to the factory. And then here in row 18, in calculation of the cost per one cubic meter, we don't use the distance to the customer, but the distance to the factory from obviously the woods. So the average distance to the factory is 120 for Poland, 60 for Ukraine and 70 for Romania. Therefore, again, the lowest costs are in Ukraine. 
labor, it's just number of people we need. We assume the same amount of people, so the same efficiency of work. And then we have an average cost per one FTE. Electricity, we calculated using the number of electricity needed in kilowatt hours and then average cost per one kilowatt hour. We calculate the electricity needed using assumptions per one cubic meters, how much we, we need of uh, electricity and the number of cubic meters of plywood we are producing. And last but not least, we've got the ex cost of external services. So here we assume certain amount per one cubic meters. So for example, 4.15 US dollars per cubic meters. And since we have assumed 200,000 cubic meters of plywood being produced, we get for Poland 3 million, for Ukraine 1.6, and for Romania we got 2.4. That's what gives us the following solution, so that the total costs are the lowest in Ukraine, total annual cost. In the next lecture, we're going to have a look at net present value for each and every investment. And we will also take into consideration not only the revenue and the EBITDA we'll generate from the factory, but also the money we can get from local government, which might impact the choice of investment. We are done with simple cost comparison between sites. Let's have a look how the NPV looks like or each and one of them and what will be the perfect choice given how much we can actually earn from each and every one of them. So let's go to NPV calculation for Poland and you will see here that we have a forecast for five years done and the top is basically what we had in the previous cost comparison. So this is estimation of costs per cost position and then we have the total cost here. Below we have the total revenue which is 80 million. This consists of uh, the number of uh, plywood produced so it's 200,000 assumed each and every year and then we have a uh, price per one cubic meter. This gives us the beta of the 24 million and what we need is to invest 100 million the very first year we would be building the factory. Now on top of that we might get some financial support from local government. So in the case of Poland we would get 60 million, 20 million each and every year for the first three years. So this creates the cash flow on the investment. So we've got uh, minus 55 million the first year, then 44 second year and the third year. And after that, it's 24 million. So it's basically the EBITDA. And here we get the uh, NPV with this discount rate assumed to be 10. We get that this is 52 million. We have done exactly the same exercise for Ukraine. So here we've got the cost. You have seen the cost comparison, but here spread obviously three years. Since we are selling on the same market, then the revenue are the same. And a bit is obviously the difference between the total revenue and total cost. Investments is assumed to be the same. We have uh, here lower government support. So just 30 million instead of 60 we had in Poland. Because of this, we have a lower cash flow here, but the NPV is still much higher due to the fact that the beta is higher. And finally, we have Romania. So like in the previous examples, the first part are costs. Then we have a total revenue of 80 million. The beta is 26 million. Investment again is 100 million. Financial support, it's equal to 40 million. Because of this, we get the cash flow, which is in row 47 and the NPV in uh, row 49, it's 45 million. Again, assuming discount rate 10%. Out of this, let's see what we get in terms of comparison. So we got to comparison. And here you will see that uh, the NPV is the highest for Ukraine. Poland, it's 52 million. And then the Romania is 45 million. For comparison, we also put the annual cost and total support we, we are given by each and every government. So roughly that's how you should compare the location. So get the cost, estimate them in details, find the drivers. In our case, the driver were uh, the number of plywood that we're going to produce. On top of that conversion into wood, so how much wood we need. Later on we had the uh, cost positions like how much it would cost to transport to the customer as well as to get the, the wood from the our supplier and obviously the distance to the customer and to the our supplier and out of this we get the annual cost. Once we added the total support given by the local government and we looked at the revenue, we could get the NPV obviously in a, sim a little bit simplified manner in order to, to see which sites are the best. Here it is simplified because we haven't done the analysis of efficiency. So usually you would not have like here that uh, the revenue and the costs are uh, each and every year the same. You would have probably a slight increase of the production. So normally you would have a certain increase of the production, but gradual. And at some point we would reach those 200,000 of plywood produced. Uh, you might also have difference between countries when it comes to things like uh, efficiency of work. So here, for example, when we look at the labor, 
we assume that in each and every country we'll need exactly the same amount of people. In reality, it's usually a little bit different. So it might be that, for example, in Poland, you need a little bit less people than in Ukraine or in Romania. Also, what can differ is the investment. Since the, you, you're building them in a different country, you might have a situation where, for example, the, the, the Polish, due to the labor costs, is much more expensive than Romania or Ukraine. So that's it in short. Play with the file. And uh, if you have any questions, just let me know in the discussion field or, or message me directly in Udemy.